Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal, and I'm out here with a special trailer. This is the Patriot Campers X3. Now, what makes this Patriot Camper unique is the fact that it's their first live inside, sleep inside model. So it's not just a traditional roof tent that goes on top of a well-built, robust trailer. This is a high quality, premium off-road trailer that now has a flip top lid that allows you to live and sleep inside of it. I actually spent the night camping at Alamo Lake last night. It was cold and it was windy, but I was comfortable inside of this Patriot. It actually has the kind of mattress that you would put in your home, queen size, extremely comfortable. What makes the Patriots very unique is just how durable and reliable they are. We're pulling it behind a Raptor R and the trailer is keeping up at any reasonable speed. That's because it's long travel, airbag, independent suspension. It also has a full ladder frame, deep galvanized for long-term durability and corrosion resistance. And we're gonna go into great detail about all the systems on this trailer as we do our walk around. All right, so we're gonna go through a detailed walk around of this unit because there are so many details to cover. From the back of the trailer, we can actually see that this is designed for off-road use. So we have a really aggressive departure angle and a strong reinforced all steel bumper in the rear. We really want to as closely as possible match the total available wheel travel of the tow vehicle to the trailer. It's one of the challenges of a lot of trailers on the market today is that they either have an undampened suspension or they don't have sufficient travel to absorb all of those impacts. When you have a short travel suspension system on a trailer, all of your contents, well, your eggs basically become scrambled before you even eat them. So it's nice to see this long travel independent suspension available from Patriot. At the back, we've got two available outlets, 12 volt outlets. We've also got access to the inside storage. So this is actually the inside of the camper. You can see that the stairs come down and we can actually get access to our clothing and other things that we want, may want to keep soft bags in the inside of the trailer. Now, why we might want to do that is, let's say that we're doing an overnight at a hotel, we could easily get those items in and out without having to set up the entire trailer. A little bit further to the side here, we can see that we have access to a slide out drawer. Now for this particular drawer, it is accessible entirely to the inside of the camper. So I would probably favor things that you want to have access to, uh, probably dry goods and food and snacks and things like that, that you would want to be able to have access to inside the trailer with it all closed up. Um, you wouldn't want to put tools and other items in here. You'd want to use one of the other storage boxes for that. But this slides in and out easily and it's accessible from inside the camper. We can also right now, we can see one of the heavy duty lift struts. These lift struts are necessary to help us bring the bed and all of that weight up and over into the open position. So this is the deployed side of the trailer. So there's very little storage on this side because you would have limited access to it once the camper is open. But you can see these heavy duty brackets that are used to support the open side of the trailer and these rubber bumpers that also allow for a soft opening. We do have some storage on this side. We have a small dust proof locker. You can keep some chairs and other items in there, longer items that go up underneath. And just below that, we also have the rear stabilizer jacks. There's two stabilizer jacks at the rear of the trailer that really kind of keep that trailer from rocking. A little bit further back, we can see that we've got heavy duty steel fender flares. So these can actually take a little bit of abuse on the trail. Uh, one of the challenges with a trailer is you can't always get the trailer in position that you want like you can with the tow vehicle. It kind of follows the route that it's gonna take behind the truck. So there are times where this will brush up against earthen berms or possibly even a tree, and you want this to be a fairly strong component. Also new for the model year 2022-2023 is their revised graphics, which are actually laser cut uh, components that are attached and fixed to the side. Um, so you're never gonna have to worry about replacing those graphics despite any brush scrapes that you may get along the way. 
The tires that Patriot Camper selected, they're a 33 inch diameter on a 16 inch wheel, which is gonna be similar to most of the tire sizes that are gonna be selected by Overlanders. And it is one of their P-Core wheels, so these are really attractive looking wheels. They're very strong wheels. The mud tire provides a few advantages for a trailer, uh, but in general, we don't wanna specify mud tires because there's a lot of additional rolling resistance. And since this isn't a driven wheel, we don't really, we're not able to really take advantage of the tractive performance of a mud tire. So oftentimes we'll specify an all-terrain to lower that rolling resistance and improve the amount of flotation available from the tire. We've also got some additional storage here. So you can put in like, this is some of the tank drain, hoses, other items. It's also got the staking kit for the awning in here as well. And the last compartment that we have on the deployed side of the trailer is actually a pretty big compartment. So it has an optional slide. So if you were to put a porta potty, uh, like a wrap on toilet or something in here, or in this case, there's some storage for dry goods. Uh, so this is a Dometic storage box, but it fits perfect in this space, but so would uh, of some of the various toilet, camp toilets that are on the market. Uh, we do always want to, when we have a trailer with us like this, we do want to bring along a camp toilet. So we're hauling all of our trash and refuse and everything out of these campsites that we're visiting. Uh, but in this case, uh, they've got a Dometic storage box fixed here. There is a lot to talk about at the front of the trailer, including the second lift strut that's used to open up the camper. We also have one of two 13 pound propane bottle storage boxes here. Um, these are reinforced to prevent rock chips and they're also rhino coated as well uh, for long-term du durability behind the tow vehicle. You can also see that you've got an improved angle here uh, to reduce the chance of impact when you're coming through cross axle terrain. And just under the chassis here in the front, we have a 33 inch diameter spare tire. That's another feature that we see from the Australian trailer companies is that they actually have to deal with a lot of flats in that country. So we have an extra spare tire and if you get it matched to the tow vehicle, then you have even a second spare tire for the tow vehicle. This is dropped from the side of the chassis, which makes it pretty easy to access. In the front frame triangle, we have a water drain and also a water access point. So that way we can fill larger jugs or water bottles. In the draw bar of the trailer, we, we have a lot going on here as well. So we have our seven pin. We also have an Anderson connection. So that way we can charge the trailer from the tow vehicle or from the auxiliary battery of the tow vehicle. We have a mechanical handbrake that operates inside of the electric trailer brake drums. So we can actually turn that on to keep the vehicle from moving when we're in camp. We also have a cruise master hitch. So this articulates left and right and up and down as we move through cross axle or very steep terrain. You can see that the pin is quite unique. So there's a couple advantages to that. It's a lot more difficult to steal the trailer because it's not a traditional ball, uh, but it's also very safe and secure and it locks in place very easily. So we remove this cap here and the pin quite literally just snaps in place and then it's locked for good. When you see that collar slide across, you know that the, the hitch is locked in place properly. And then we push down the release, lock the collar back, and then it drops out just as easily. It also has a little bit of a self-centering function, which makes it a little bit easier to get it attached to the tow vehicle. So the front jockey wheel is designed by Manutech. It has a fairly good range of lift, and then it also has a larger diameter wheel. We want the wheel of these jockey wheels to be as large as possible to give us some 
form of a fighting chance when we're in softer terrain and we need to maneuver these trailers by hand. Uh, but it's a pretty good diameter wheel. When you stow it for transit, once it gets connected to the vehicle, actually turn this open and then the entire jockey wheel stores it up on top of the drawbar completely out of the way uh, to protect it from damage. The front storage box of the X3 is filled with surprises. So this is a, a steel panel that's been bent and welded and has also been covered by uh, rhino lining. It has a couple safety catches to prevent it from accidentally opening. And then the entire thing lifts up on gas assist struts and up and out of the way. It's a little bit tight for those that are taller, but it's got, at least it's got this bulb seal to protect your head. A lot of storage in here for camp cooking related items. It also has a full Wabasto heating system. So this Wabasto heating system works in two ways. It heats up water for use in the kitchen or for showering, but it also runs full hot water through a radiator with a fan that blows up into the camper to keep the camper warm during winter months or during colder evenings. So this system is quite reliable. We've had a lot of success with the Wabasto units throughout the years, and it has a three US gallon diesel fuel tank that, that will run it easily for a week. You can see the shower nozzle here. We've got a couple adjustment knobs for the degree of hot that goes in there. And then the entire unit is enclosed within this protected box. This additional storage space is really helpful when we're out traveling. They've got a, bu a bunch of different cooking items for cooking over the fire, but there's also an optional swing out barbecue that can be fitted to this particular location. You can also see, you can also see we've got our fire extinguisher available right here. This is the kitchen side of the X3, and this is the largest kitchen that they have in their entire range. And it's impressive by any standard compared to any outside kitchen of any trailer. In the back here, we have a unique storage option. This is what they call their wet storage. I would probably not store anything wet back here. Imagine putting some towels or even wet boots or anything. It's just gonna become wet and dusty by the time you get to the end of the, of the day. But this storage box is perfect for storing firewood. So you can put firewood in there, you can put uh, recovery kits, for example, uh, things like that, that it doesn't really matter if it gets dusty or not. This large front storage locker, this contains the slide out kitchen and it also contains a Dometic 75 liter fridge. Now, one of the things I really like about this is the back door of the fridge can actually be accessible from inside the camper. So if you're in a really hot day or you wanna stay out of the sun or it's a cold morning and you wanna access the creamer for your coffee, that's accessible from inside of the camper. So this slides all the way out and then it even slides out further. So you can see here, We've got our sink with cold and hot water. You can actually run a hose to move it into a bucket, or if it's just water, you can get it a little further away from camp. And then we have two storage lockers. So this is where you can keep a lot of your kitchen items, uh, plates and spoons and cups and things like that. And it even has a little storage a locker for draining off of your sponges and other towels that may have a little bit of moisture in them. And then there's also another little drawer here on the front for utensils and knives and it's even padded. It has a felt liner which keeps these things from getting so, so damaged from running down the trail. So let's talk about the rack on top of the trailer. You can actually affix accessories like bike racks and kayak racks. Those can all be used with this particular trailer. And then you remove those items and then you can swing the top up and over. It'll carry up to 100 kilograms. 
So you're looking at about 240 pounds of additional equipment that you want to have on top of the trailer. You can see this is the support ladder here. And then there is a 120 watt solar panel that provides you additional power beyond what the charging you would have while driving the vehicle or the charge that's available in the two AGM or lithium ion batteries on board the trailer. And one of the things people really like about the X3 is the kitchen, because it's a big kitchen. And this entire work surface drops down. This is all dimpled stainless steel for easy cleanup. This also gives us access on the left side to the electronics control panel. So this is gonna give us our red vision and it's gonna give us our Wabasto heater control as well, which again is gonna give us hot water and heat inside of the cabin. There's also a, a switch inside of the camper that you can turn on the Wabasto remotely. You've got some USB and 12 volt outlets. You've also got the suspension control here and then you've got your master control panel for your electronics. So you can plug in 120 volt accessories, and then you've got your, your main circuit breakers. Moving a little bit further over, we've got a bunch of storage. We've got some camp blankets and additional accessories. And then this opens up to a drawer where you can keep maybe some spices and dry goods and things like that. Another drawer here, which has got some of the stove accessories, and then the stove itself slides out. And there's a couple different stove options. We've seen them with Dometics or this Eureka stove. So you can do heat up your food, water, do a little grilling here for pancakes in the morning. One of the most notable features of the X3 is the PCOR 270 degree awning. This awning is on a very unique lifting structure that puts it up over head height. It's just, it uses strut assist and a couple clamps. You'd think with, this is a fairly heavy awning and a he fairly heavy structure, but just a little push here very light push, I mean, just a couple fingers of pressure and the thing goes up into the high position. So now it's supported by the struts and you can see the cradle that's used for supporting the awning structure when it's going down the trail. That's actually been improved in the most current model year. It's a larger cradle with a larger support surface. And this provides coverage all the way over the back of the trailer and even over part of the nose box. Okay, so now we're gonna demonstrate how to open up the camper. And that's done by flipping this entire lid up and over to the side. Now that we've done a tour of the outside of the X3, let's come on inside. We just spent the last day here camped at Alamo Lake in Arizona. Beautiful spot and this is really a comfortable place to spend time. Uh, it's amazing how small, compact this trailer is when it's all folded up, but once you flip that top up and over, it's kind of like the Taj Mahal tent on the inside of this thing. And you can also see where the quality of the Patriot campers permeates throughout all of the interior as well. So I'm able to sit here at basically an L-shaped couch or dinette settee down one side. There's a flip-up table so you can easily do work while you're traveling. It also has a small flip-up pad that would allow you to have uh, either shorter individuals or children sleep inside here as, as well. But we've also got very comfortable cushions. These are high quality cushions. Uh, they're designed to last for the long haul. And a lot of additional storage. 
So if I flip up this one little cushion here, I actually have access to that full length drawer that we showed you that slides out from the back of the trailer. So if you put your clothing and other items towards the front of the drawer, then you can access that from inside of the trailer. Then there's a, additional storage pockets here on the side where you could put electronics, charge cords, other small items that you want to access inside of the trailer. And then there's 12 volt outlets, there's lighting on the floor, very durable flooring as well. And then one of the things I think is so cool is at the back, you can flip up this access panel and you can actually get into the fridge. So if you set up the fridge correctly, you can get to one of the sides of the fridges and access some additional food while you're, if you need some snacks while you're inside your camper. And then depending on what options you select, there's another access door here. And that actually either is just dry storage. Uh, I've got an additional blanket in here right now, but they do have an option for a coffee maker. So it's a fully plumbed integrated coffee maker that comes up and you can make your espresso in the morning while you're inside of the trailer. That's a very neat option. One of the things that I also like about it is it has access to 120 volt and USB charging inside the trailer on this little pop-up, I would call it like a, a tower of power. <laughs> you got the tower of power here, so you've got USB-C, you got standard USB, a couple 120 volt outlets. A couple other things about the trailer, there are these adjuster rods so you can actually put the trailer un tent under additional tension. And that was really important last night. We had quite a bit of wind. And I do notice the, the surface area of the tent. This, it's basically a large sail. So if you're in really high wind, <clears throat> you need to be aware that there's going to be some flapping. It's very heavy canvas. Uh, we had some other tents that were here on site and they made a lot more noise than this one did but this does make some noise so what I did was there are these bungee cords that are used to fold up the trailer uh, when you when you close it all up for transport and I actually put these in place and it put all of that can canvas under additional tension and really reduced a lot of the flapping in the wind so if you're in higher wind you're going to want to put these tension bungee cords in place to manage a little bit of that canvas movement. And then we've got this huge bed. It looks like a queen size bed to me. It has a regular mattress like you'd find in your home. So very comfortable mattress to sleep on. And it's kind of in this little basin. So once you crawl into it, you're in your little cocoon and they leave enough room in the lid for you to actually put your all of your bedding in place and then there is this mesh cover that you can snap in place over the bedding so you can leave all of your bedding made you can leave your bed made you can leave the the duvet the cover the sleeping bags the pillows in place and put down that cover and then flip the whole thing up and over